everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another awesome FileMaker day of FileMaker training. I'm here with Nick Hunter. Say hello, Nick. How are you? Hello, everybody. We're going to make Nick a little bit bigger here. There's Nick. Nick is here as a uh, color commentator today, so the roles are going to be reversed. So normally I color commentate, and um, in this case, he's going to color commentate while I attempt to struggle through a demo. Today is going to be a li little different because what we're going to do is where normally Nick is talking about um, all the great things you can do with FileMaker and that kind of thing. And, and, and what today is is about basically a landmine that's in there that kind of Claire's built into the product that the engineers know about it and pretty much the developers that been around know about it. And my job is to educate you on the landmine so you don't step on it and blow yourself up. It's not trashing FileMaker, just kind of the way this is. It's like every everything that you have in life has all these great attributes and then it has like a couple like little nagging spots in it that need to be, probably should be improved. I'm not even telling Claire's to improve this because it's been this way for so long. It's like, uh, you know, uh, just kind of the way it is. But I need to alert you to this so you don't get yourself in trouble because it will result in unhappy customers. Real quick, let's cover some um, uh, previous announcements. So what this is where I kind of hide Nick and it drives Nick marginally insane when I do that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my browser. I'm going to go to fmtraining.tv. I'm going to bring up the website here real quick. I'm going to put Nick down here so he's hanging out down there. And so if you go to fmtrain.tv, you can see that we have uh, various tabs right here. The live training tab will show you the upcoming schedule. Today is cascading deletes. Tomorrow is monkey bread with Christian Schmitz. Uh, as a reminder, we do lots of great FileMaker training. So if you want to uh, make sure you're supporting the channel, as I move the camera briefly that way, make sure you go to the fmtrain.tv website and the bundle. And uh, you, down here are the bundles that you can get that has our on-demand training. This is 90 plus hours of training. There's nothing else like it in the FileMaker market. There's nothing like it. It's 90 hours of training on Pro, on Go, on WebDirect, and on server, a ton of server work, and even on Cloud 2. Um, and so we've got it covered end to end, and it's pretty inexpensive. Today's, let's, I'm going to briefly bring up uh, Ellen's graphic here real quick. I want to show you what today is about. So. So everyone understands what's going on. Um, I don't know if I can, uh, can I zoom in on that? I really, I really didn't make that full screen. This right here is, FileMaker is not this bad to be very clear. But there is, uh, we're gonna talk about one specific landmine that as you're running, you want to avoid. And, and I would say, don't even get this close to it. You need a little more space. So what is that? Well, basically, so we're, here we have a FileMaker solution. I'm gonna basically, I just built this. For those of you who are watching Discord and came early, I built this while we were sitting here. And so this is a one solution. It's called, uh, whatever it's called, it's called Cascading is the name of the solution. And there is a contact table and a notes table. Two tables, right? This is ultra simple, but I want everyone to follow along. So there are two tables. What we have is a relationship of ID contact, ID contact over here. So it's a primary key on the right, left side. Uh, right side is a foreign key. This is basically kind of a baby. This would be the beginnings of Anchor Buoy, right? So the layout is attached to this side over here. You attach things over here. Now, uh, and so basically at the end of the day, well, I can look at the field definitions real quick. The only field that we care about on the contact side is the name. Everything, all these other fields were like auto created, right? I'm like, I can just like delete them just to simplify things. And I can go over to the notes side and I can do the same thing. Auto created when they, all this other stuff, we don't need it. Um, I rolled my own fields, there we go. So it's very simple. So I have two fields and then three fields. So the total of five fields in this solution, two tables, one relationship. If I go on the relationship, it says, allow the creation of related records on the notes side is turned off. So if I go in here, I say, okay. I come over here, I wanna type in and create a new note through the portal, it won't let me. If I go back to, I'm a, going forward, I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut, command shift D with my left hand. So my left, I'm, I'm right hand. So I'm right handed. So my support side hands, we say in the business, this is your firing hand, your dominant side, your support side hands, your left hand. It's on the keyboard doing stuff. So your right hand is up here doing mousey stuff. Your left hand is supporting uh, the keyboard. So I'm gonna go command shift D on the left side. I'm gonna bring up the relationship. I'm gonna check off create related records. So I said, okay, I hit okay. And now it allows me to put a note in here. Um, someone made fun of the day, uh, the other day I made a reference to a fax. Like, what's a fax? Fax is so 1960s. I'm like, dude, <laughs> we didn't have a space program in 1960, right? I wasn't until late, late 60s. 
Uh, I was laughing. It was funny. So anyway, so you come over here. Nick, you could say you sent a letter or we discussed something or some a quote. So as I type things over here, notice it's creating related records over here. So watch over here one more time. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to say proposal. And as I click out, it will see it'll create a record over there. So that is the create. That's cascading ads. They work fantastic. They work great. Feel free to use them unless you don't want people clicking in a portal. That's more of a business workflow, and you get into Nick conversation with that, like, oh, you obstinate daughter, you do this or don't do it or whatever you would say. I don't, it doesn't matter. That's not the landmine. The landmine is this one over here, right? So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this, and then we're going to set we're going to demonstrate this as it is. And then we're going to demonstrate the landmine if we can get it to do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go Command Shift D again. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do this obsessive compulsive thing. And the obsessive compulsive thing is when you say, "Well, if I delete a contact, then I absolutely have to delete all the other related records." In general, deleting things is bad. Never mind, once again, the landmine. Just generally, deleting things is bad. You should always mark them as inactive, canceled the contact passed away, whatever you want to say. But deleting it really kind of gets rid of it, and there's no history in there. And then you, and then you don't know that the person was ever in there or they were ever deleted. If She, she should not turn on, um, generally be deleting records, unless you have a very tightly controlled, I would say a scripted process that you're very careful. This right here are like automatic settings that, you know, FileMaker will do for you in the background. So I'm going to say delete Delete the related records in this table when the record on the other side is deleted, right? It actually says on the other table. So I say, OK. If I come over here, I say, TK, let's put a couple notes in here for TK. Um, uh, he, gonna, uh, tra he travels somewhere, does something, some other word, right? So there's, we've got a record in there. So TK is over here. We have travels. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to delete Nick for lack of a better example. So when I delete Nick, it deletes it here. The cascading delete should delete it over here. So if I say I'm on this record right here, I say records, I say delete records. Um, we say delete and then watch over here behind me. Magic. Doo -doo, it gets rid of his records. And so in the book that I originally got, when I got the manuscript from the book that was originally written in FileMaker 6, the guy goes, you should definitely not create, create orphan records. And I'm like, the problem is that there's this bug in here. So let's set up for the bug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I got Larry in here. I'm going to put red crayons, right, for that. Um, and then I'm going to create another one. I'm going to put Nick back in here because we should never have deleted Nick. We love Nick. Nick is at Studio 69. And he also, oops, I created a blank record. I'm just going to delete that one real quick. Uh, and what else do you do, Nick? You also uh, play piano. P I don't know if I can play it, spell that. All right, so we've created the related records in here. So we know that the delete is on here. So now, now what we want to do is we're going to our relational diagram and we're going to say, so I'm going to do this a little bit slower now. Here we go. And I'm sure Nick is horrifically bored, right? But trust me on this. So this is an anchor buoy. So I'm going to do a little, where's our little post it? They changed the, our icon. Is this the post it note right here? Where's the, the little post it? Oh, is it this? Or is it this? There it is. There's my little post it note. All right, so this is an anchor kind of, it always stays behind. So this is the way we kind of notate an anchor buoy combination. So you could have like one layout here and the related records. So I'm going to create a, another one right here. And I'm going to say, okay. And so it doesn't really matter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, give me a relationship with contacts and it'll be called contacts two, okay? And then I'm going to over here, create another one right here. I'm going to say notes, it'll be notes two. And then I'm going to come over here <laughs> and watch it work correctly, which is, which is the insidious part of this thing, right? It's kind of that thing. So this one, I'm going to make a note up here. And this one, I'm going to say with uh, uh, cast gating delete on, okay? And that one's on. And then this one down here, I'm just going to say with it off for the moment, okay? So we're going to try this out, right? Ready, Nick? We're going to try this out. So in this relationship yep. here, we're going to have the creation on, but the delete off, OK? On this one up here, we have the create on and delete on. Now, if we're on a layout that belongs to this table of currents right here and we delete it, it should delete. If we're on one over here, it should not delete. But we don't really, really, really super 
know that that will work, we're going to test it. And that's kind of the, uh, the issue that we run into. So if I go to layout mode, if I say layouts, if I say, well, I'm going to just go to manage layouts. It's probably the easiest way of doing this. I almost rarely use manage layouts. It's one of those like things that you can end up not using. I go to context. I can say duplicate it. What I'll do is I'll say, I'll call it tog2. And then uh, that one will belong to tog2. Now, if I come over there and I double uh, click it, I want to get contacts from contacts2. It makes sense, right? And then up here at the top, I'm going to call this tog1, OK? And so we got tog1 at the top, top, tog2 at the bottom. Very simple, straightforward. Now, one of you guys, folks will realize that we actually already have kind of a minor problem because um, we have a layout here that belongs to, that's tog1. Let me pop a new window right here and say we're going to go to tog. Uh, I'm confused. All right, I have a minor problem. Stand by. I made a mistake somewhere. I did it right in front of you while I was talking. Oh, yeah, that one's tog1. One. This is tog edit. Tog2. My bad. All right, so it makes sense. So tog2 uh, talks to context2, bottom one, top one, right? So the bottom one, if we delete a record, should not delete the related notes. The top one, if we delete it, will delete the related note. That's what's supposed to happen. Now, what's interesting about this, I'm going to go and say OK. And I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to go up here a little bit. Now I'm going to go so big. And so the problem is right now is that I'm in uh, TOG2. TOG2 isn't actually relationally connected. See, it says related tables, right? Uh, it's not connected, right? So that's, that's why I have to fix this. So this is going to go to notes2, right? And then I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to change this. So that way it's properly connected. Makes sense what I'm saying, everyone? So it's they're totally separate togs, and we're all set that way. So I'm going to hit Browse Mode here, Browse Mode here. And so I'm going to go up here. And so in the event that we went to TK, right, and we deleted TK, we would get rid of that record up here. In fact, just to verify that, let's go ahead and do that. I'm up here in TK. I'm going to go and delete TK. We're looking, we're looking to see that it actually deletes the uh, travel over here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to say on this record, I'm going to say record, uh, not delete all records, delete record. Are you sure you want to delete this entire record? Delete. OK, it deletes it. OK, that's cool. Now I'm going to come down here. Now, this is the part where it gets sketchy. Uh, oh, i got to fix this other field over here. My bad. ID contact, thank you. That's what happens when you duplicate a layout and then you don't fix everything. OK, great. So now we have our second one. So if I go over here to Larry and red crayons, right? So we got Larry, red crayons is right there. If I delete Larry, it shouldn't delete red, red crayons. The problem is, in a lot of situations, I've had four or five engineers come back to me and verify this behavior. Um, I'm going to go and delete it right here. I'm going to go clear. I'm going to say records. I'm going to say uh, uh, delete record. And so it should it should not delete red crayons. And there you go. It just deleted the red crayons. So that you just saw the landmine detonate, and now I'm dead on the ground. And so what happens is that in this is tog two contacts from tog two, tog two. This is tog two down here, right? Contacts tog two. I also say tog two, tog two. Um. Tog2 has cascading deletes turned off. So remember, we always tell everyone, context is everything. Context is everything. Nick, say context is everything. Help me. Context is everything. Nick. Context is everything. Keep going, Nick. Context is everything. Context is everything. Context is everything. Context is everything. Stop. It's not everything. This is like one of those like little moments in life where it's not everything. It's a lie. Remember, remember the cake is a lie? The yeah. cake is a lie. Right? If, if Claire is watching us, I know what he's going to tell you. What's he going to tell me? What's he going to say? In, in, in this here, mm -hmm. you cannot think about context because you are creating the context. So you cannot rely on something that you are creating. Like, that means it's like you cannot... Um, uh, you know, you cannot use another organ in your body to think than the brain. So if you disconnect, if you are editing the brain, you cannot use your brain anymore. Uh, you need another brain. This, this here, it's record driven, not context driven. You delete a record that is linked somewhere in, 
in there's one there's one or more contexts that are deleting the 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 real related record when you delete one record. Mm -hmm. So I know what the problem is. It's hard to it it, it shouldn't be okay. I think it I actually know what the problem is, but I want to run a test. We're going to do it live for everyone. But I think it – so so there is a thing in the world of FileMaker called – Kevin Frank calls it primogen, primogeniture, primogeniture. It's a word that thoroughly outpaces my IQ. I have no idea what that means. But it means like the default initial primary kind of one that you set up. And uh, – FileMaker actually keeps track of the original TO that you put on your layout. Have you heard this, Nick, before? Have you heard this one before? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me explain this real quick. So so I'm trying to pretend I'm, I'm channeling Kevin Frank. For those of you who don't know Kevin Frank, Kevin Frank's a longtime FileMaker guy. Very smart guy. I haven't talked to him, shit, three or four years at least. Really smart guy. He writes a blog once in a while. His blogs are quite good, but mostly he's an older guy. He's probably 10 years older than I am. So, you know, these guys are getting older and they're like, eh, right? So they're expecting Megan to, to pick up the blog writing or Richard, who's younger than they are, to pick up the blog writing. So he talked about primogeniture. I'm like, what the hell is this? So he is one of the purveyors of Anchor Buoy originally. And, and and there was a guy before him, Donnelly or Donald or whatever his name was, who actually prototyped the idea in FileMaker 7 of Anchor Buoy. And then Kevin posted an article, if you guys want to blog about it, you can read about it, but it's pretty propeller head technical about this primogeniture thing. And the idea is that I suspect that when FileMaker, when you're executing this delete, it's going to the primogeniture, which is these two up here. These were the first ones created. So if we reverse the test, we should be able to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the test real quick, and I'm going to see if it's going based upon that. Now, once again, I would never try to explain this in my training. All you folks here are my guinea pigs. It's like I'm putting – you're like bunnies at the uh, experimental bunnies. I'm putting shampoo in your eyes to see if you explode. Um, <laughs> and, it's, and, and so I would never do this in my training because <laughs> – I can't explain anchor buoy to a lot of people. How the hell am I going to explain to them that in anchor buoy, there's actually the main anchor and the main buoy, but you really can't see about it. But under the hood, FileMaker knows what it is, right? Yeah, no, just a bad conversation to have. So I'm going to reverse these. So the top one is now off. The top one is now off, right? The bottom one is now on. And I'm going to see if this actually is the... Uh, is the issue so so i i'm gonna have to put some more data in we're gonna do that real quick hang on this will be i've never tested this. this is like brand new so for me and so here we go so everyone we're all set we're all suffering together in this so i'm gonna be down i'm gonna create a couple more records here i'm gonna put in uh let's see megan is green and let me just say let's just do another one can i do oh i need another record let's just say jake jake is um, wearing a wig, I think is what he was doing that one day. Okay, so we got Jake and Mary. So, so the top one is now set to not delete. The bottom one is set to delete. So this is two, the bottom tog, right? So if we go back here, the bottom one is delete is on, top one's delete is off. Okay, so once again, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to verify it initially. I'm going to go to Megan. There's Megan Green up there. There's the green with Megan. I'm going to go here to Megan. I'm going to say delete records. It should generally work delete records so one two three we're going to watch green disappear one two three gone now i'm going to go to jake up here jake up here and i'm attempted to jake so we're seeing if wearing wig goes away it's even money it goes away or not you ready one two three delete the wearing wig it did so it's not primogeniture this is just broke this is just broke. It looks through the entire system to see if cascading deletes are on anywhere, yeah, uh, and and, and it just blows it up. So it's not primogeniture for those who are reading the Kevin Frank yeah. conversation. So so that's the problem uh, of this is, and that is a problem why when you have a giant solution, and you have somewhere a cascading delete like this checked, if you open the the. Please open the, the, the schema for me. Yeah. Okay, the, open the, the schema. The schema. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, okay. Imagine you have 500 of them and you have, uh, you know, ankle buoy system. Yep. So, that, so you have an ankle buoy system and you have 
let's say 500 of the uh, occurrences like this. And, um, and you have many, many, many uh, buoy, you know, uh, uh, many TOs that point to the same table. And one of them somewhere, uh, you have the deletes checked. And each time you delete one record, uh, you got the related record to be deleted and you have no clue at all which one of those 500 is actually deleting. This is where, this is a major flaw of the system is this. When you have a big solution and you use the cascading things, you, you can stay maybe two days to find out which one. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is a problem. So that's why, you know, soon we will have a kind of a, a session uh, about how to use that problem to our advantage, pretty much that, that, that's what it is. That's a, that's a technique, that's a way we can do to take this problem, this bug, pretty much this is a broken feature, okay? But let's take this broken feature and make it, uh, and build in, and use it in a way it's in our advantage. So Ed Burkle says, far out, dude. Ruben says, why isn't Claris fi Claire is fixing this problem? The same reason they're not fixing the custom menus because mm -hmm. it's been that way for so long that everyone's been trained um, yes. to that it sucks. And so this, the ascending com compatibility, that means Farmaker, OK, Claris slash Farmaker slash Claris, they are obsessed with something. They want a file maker, Nashoba file maker of 1984. They want that file to be compatible with file maker 20. That, 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 that's what they want. You know, they, they want, they want a, a ascending compatibility, descending compatibility to be down to the, to the original of file maker. When all other companies, they broke this, you know, a, a, a Microsoft Word 1.0, you cannot open it, you know, it's, right. oh, oh, forget about it, okay? Uh, there's no way you can open it. So the, it, what Nick is implying here, he didn't say this, is that uh, if you did a file format change, it would open up Claris' ability to fix some things potentially. We don't know that for a fact, but every time you talk to engineering, a lot of times they say, yeah, we could fix that, and then they start looking at the ceiling because they're actually working it out in their heads, and they go, yeah, that might take a file format change, is what they say. And then as soon as you do that, you know that that's like, it's like, you know, like, hey, uh, here's the army troops. We're going to send them overseas. Yeah, but we might have to shoot a nuclear weapon. Okay, don't do that. As soon as it gets that big, it becomes a political decision. It's no longer a tactical decision at the engineering level. It becomes a VP CEO decision, and they have to decide whether they want to deal with that. I'm not saying they should fix this. I'm just, uh, this has been this way so long. I am not in any way saying fix this. In fact, if they fix this, it would probably break something else. Just leave it alone. But... I'm alerting you, my loyal, trusty FileMaker followers on the internet, that this is an issue. You got to be aware of it. Canberra says the TOs point back to the original table, so to so so to me, this makes sense. Yeah, in fact, he's right. Uh, whoever said that? Uh, that was Ed, but it, it doesn't make yeah. sense to me because it's all about context. Because you, these things are separate, and they don't. Nothing in here cross pollinates. You can't cross pollinate. I mean, you saw the broke stuff. It was cross pollinate, right? It was broke, so I had to fix it. There's no cross pollinating except in this situation. It's like your yeah. bees over here went over to the flowers over here, and they're not supposed to do that. See, I put a little barrier around here. They're not connected, right? That's why we use anchor buoy. Yeah. So the Ed was right on this. It's it's not the TO that drives the deletes. It's the table. Right, but that's okay. that's fine. That's uh, yeah, yeah, I, whatever. I'm just okay. So uh, yeah, so and, and the pri the problem is, the, uh, you're right on something. Is you said this to you know, uh, this relationship to to delete, and you have another one where you sit on the other one. We said no delete, and it deletes still. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's uh, well. Is that why I said that? Okay. Rob it's is a broken all... feature. It's broken. Yes, but we can use that to our advantage. So, so a couple, couple things. One is that when your customers come to you and say, "I swear the data was there yesterday. I put the data in, and now it's gone." Okay. Um, let's talk about that briefly. What are the what are the what what are the results of the data was there and now it's gone? 
One is that the customer actually thought they put it in, but they didn't. Maybe they actually put it in somewhere else or they imagined it. But let's say they actually did put it in a FileMaker. If they're in find mode and they punch and they type a bunch of data in and you go to browse mode, the data's gone. So you have to be in the right mode. That's why people they're always trying to educate people in find mode, you get little question marks and other things. Um, you could put the data in like on an iPad, like a signature or something like that. It, it, like if you do an insert from device and you put the signature into a container and then you put the device down. So immediately you take the signature, you say okay, and then you put the device down, you lose the data, right? Because the record is still in a state of editing and it hasn't been committed. And when your device <laughs> gets disconnected, it's not going to commit the data. If you're lucky, you come back, it reconnects maybe, but that's, I can't tell you how many people scan signatures and images and they lose them because there's no automatic commit there. There should not be an automatic commit. It makes sense that there's not, but that's another area. So you lose data there. Um, you lose data because there's a delete. So you allow someone to actually have a delete command. Like in the file, you can go up and delete. They can delete it. But this is the, this is the um, I, I had an engineer who doesn't work for me anymore. Um, he's working uh, at a real estate company doing whatever he's doing. And he, um, about two years ago, and he came to me and goes, the customer, the customer says that they're getting data deleted, and I, and I and I go, well, then there's a cascading delete turned on. He goes, there are no cascading deletes. I said, I said, uh, will I said, I guarantee there are cascading deletes. I guarantee there are cascading deletes turned on. He goes, no, there's not. And I go, does the customer have access to the administrative section of the solution? Like, can they admin? And they said, yeah, they're pretty talented. They can get under the hood and do stuff. I said. I bet you. Of course, he wouldn't take the bet. He comes back, goes, well, the customer last week behind my back went in to, fi to find a bunch of relationships, and he turned cascading deletes on. And there it is. And so it's uh, it's one of those sort of things. So if you want if you want to have a – you need to have a plausible plan when – I mean, Nick, it's happened to you. Customer comes to you and says, hey, the data is missing from the solution. What do you do, right? What do you do when the customer comes to you and says, my data is gone? It was there, now it's gone. Back up. Okay, but you need to know why you need the backup. The server oh, didn't crash, right? I, I hate it when I'm having a conversation and he's not paying attention at all. So I throw the ball. It's like uh, it's a uh, first down the fourth yard line. We're ready to go. And Nick's over there going, uh, "I like a mocha latte, extra strong with 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 whole milk, please." I'm like, "We're talking football, not coffee, actually, Nick." You know, actually, it's very hard because you talk you talk to the audience and then you talk to me. I don't know which you talk to audience to talk to me. I don't know. Can I turn my head this way so everyone can see I'm I'm talking to you? Okay, no, Nick. You. Okay, so if somebody you. Loses, if, okay, you. So, uh, in, that, in that case, okay, if you delete, if you okay, if you delete something in cascading, you delete something, you lost the data. Pay it. Uh, you need a backup. Pay it. That's it. So if it's on anywhere, it's on everywhere. Give that man a gold star. He's correct. If it's on, now here's the rub. I have seen situations where it doesn't delete stuff. It's not a guaranteed thing, but. I've done it now twice in one solution and it's doing it. So what might cause it not to do it? I don't know. But I'm just telling you that um, you, that, you, you need to assume that, it's bad. Yeah, that's a, that's a way that's a way you can find it. Uh, if you really want to find which one, uh, you can you can pull a DDR mm -hmm. and do a search on, um, yeah. So or run it through base DDR elements. I run it through do. base elements. Base elements, baby. So. Yeah, okay. I don't use base elements. But. Yeah, but we have a site license. You can use it anytime you want, Nick. You know, I like the pain. You, li you like the pain? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dude, this is the bizarrest broadcast I've done in a long time. <laughs> Michael. So, Michael, that's a question, right? My qu Michael question. If you delete a content, for me, it makes sense that you delete all the records. No. Sometimes, okay, so let me try this out, Nick. So let me try this out. So if I have a product, so we're in our CRM system, right? You ready, Michael Gravel? Ready, everyone? Shh, no one answer the question. Michael Gravel, I'm talking to you. Listen very carefully. Okay, here we go. Just for Michael. I have a CRM. I have a product database. And in there are widgets, and we're selling widgets. And we put a bunch of, uh, we sell a bunch of widgets, and uh, they're on an invoice. And then we decide that we don't sell the the uh, Milwaukee line of electric screwdrivers anymore because they are totally trash and we're cleaning our database up so we're going to delete those products. Well, if you had this turned on, you you could very easily all, delete all the way through and delete 
the uh, invoice that the guy bought, the person, guy, gal bought, whoever bought a Milwaukee screwdriver, right? And it could also delete the contact who bought it too, right? So just because you delete a record doesn't mean you should delete everything that's attached yeah. to it, right? I mean, damn, right? So anyway, so that's for uh, Michael. Can, can, I can I tell you something here? Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, because you ask you ask me for something, so you know I, I, I'm thinking about this. So here, what I'm doing typically when uh, I, it's everything like this is very sensitive. This is how I do. When you delete a main uh, a, a parent record, okay, a parent you delete a parent record, and then you get a, a bunch of uh, if you delete the parent record, you uh, you get pretty much orphans record. We call that orphan records. Okay, that mean. Uh, it's there are records are related to the parents that now don't have parents, so we call that orphan records. Okay, this is it. This is the official terminology in the database world. So, what you do, you delete the parents and you forget about the the orphan. Okay, you forget about them. Every night, or every when you, every time you want, you have a schedule script on server that says okay walk through all the all the tables okay and find out who is often this is very simple to do um i can i can explain one day how to do that and and then you say okay you can you can choose to delete the often or you can say okay by the way in case of i need that back can you archive those guys so pretty much what you create here it's a trash kind of for intermediate state where you 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 can gather all the orphan record and take them on the side and keep them if you want to keep for a week for example or for a month and then if something happens okay oh by the way oops i did that guy but i need all the orphan back you know you can do that this is what i'm doing so i don't know if that helped uh, yeah, and so I can tell you from my end of things, I take the little bit different tact. Is that in the book, I kind of we went round and round with this, and I basically said in the book, orphans are okay because they represent such a small group of, of data. Because I generally don't want people deleting records anyway, and so in the event that we have some test records or things like that, we uh, we leave them right because I don't want the the risk of deleting important data. This, this gets back to OCD. Nick's a little or a lot OCD because he wants it to be perfect, right? And people get like that. They're like, if I delete a record, I can't have any orphans because everything must be perfectly clean behind me as I clean, okay? The problem is being clean to perfect presents data risk to other data. That's the problem. And so you're like, I want that deleted right now. Go delete it because I'm OCD and it must be clean at all times perfect. Right? I have a daughter who's very OCD. And um, the problem is, is that that comes at the penalty for that is you're running a real risk of deleting important data. I, I've been burned by deleting important data. So therefore, A, I don't delete records, one. Two, if I did delete something, I'm definitely not going to cascading delete my way through the system, right? So yeah. I, have a, I have a system, our finished goods system, which you get emails out of. Everyone gets every email at least once a week out of it. Um, it has, I don't know, about 9 million records in it, and it's about 10 or 12 gigabytes, okay? If I deleted all the records that should be deleted in there and got rid of them, I might free up 500K or a megabyte or two megabytes or something trivially stupid. So is it worth that? Not for me, because I know that if I delete critical data, I'm going to spend hours, if not days, putting it back in, and I don't want that responsibility hanging over my head. Yeah. Right? No, so, no, you're... Actually, actually it's... Uh, it's it's Okay. Uh, if you lose uh, very sensitive data, uh, if you have the risk, if you don't want to lose anything, you delete anything. You archive. So you need to build a system that archives the thing for you. Uh, and everybody says, oh, yeah, but Claris should have an archive system. Okay, yeah, but Claris should have a magic wand that transformed me like a proof, like a top <laughs> I have a so, sh Claris should have a magic wand. That's a shirt. We need that. Okay, yeah. So, so uh, unfortunately, we cannot ask Claris to do everything. Uh, it's not possible. And, and actually, we have all the tools to do that. An archive system uh, in FireMaker, I can build that in in matter of minutes. Okay, well, um, just so you know, people, uh, 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 apparently, Bilbo, I guess you know Bilbo. So, the Baggins yeah. is decided he's starting a revolt. 
he says buzz for delete management on server. And so everyone's now buzzing. I got buzz, 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 buzz. So if you want to see Nick do archiving of records and uh, and partially OCD behavior, buzz in. We got two buzzes, not, three no, buzzes, it, four buzzes, it's five not, buzzes. It's, uh, you know, look what I said. Okay, if you rewind the, the video and, and uh, you, you listen to what I said, I said, okay, you go every day, you clean up, right? You can delete or you can archive. So, but it it happened on the on the background on the background. It's not happening. You you don't. For example, you delete the parents, okay, uh, and you want you want to keep all the the orphan. Um, the what's the name? Or you can just pretend to delete the parent. That means you put the parent. You know, you you move the parent in an archive kind of a, a table. And you keep the the and you keep the 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 related data right the way it is. No, you're right, Nick. Nick, I'm not disagreeing at all. You're totally correct. I just I think it's mm, largely for most situations unnecessary if you yeah. just won't. And, and and once again, you you point it out. You point it out on something, and, and that that comes to the same conclusion all the time. Number number is key. The number is key. For example, I have solution where I cannot afford to keep everything, because otherwise I will end up with, not with nine million, with but with nine hundred million records uh, in a matter of one one year or two years. You know, I cannot keep everything. Uh, so, uh, and then you you have a crazy search that is very very heavy. You know, so you carry all this weight with you, right? So sometimes you you can you you don't have the luxury to say oh I keep everything. Um, so uh, because you have a because you have solution uh, people that you have a lot of in and out in and out in and out you know you you bring data you treat the data and you get out the data right so you 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 remove the data so you have a lot of things like this right so so especially when you have a lot of uh, data movement like that you start having index issues you start you know. Everything gets heavier and heavier and heavier. So you need to clean up some time, you know, because otherwise, uh, you d because you you don't you want to correct one of your OCDs that is to clean up everything. <laughs> you get up, you get out, you get to have another one uh, which is hoarding. Hoarding. You know, oh, you cla you're a class five hoarder. Okay, well that's the flip side of OCD. So yeah, you can't be yeah, a class you, five you know hoarder. I mean? So you, you see, so you you want you don't want to. You 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 want to uh, to fight one of your OCDs with another one, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna change gears here. So we are going to come back and have Nick uh, do uh, delete management and archiving. Uh, Amy Sheely did point out the fact that someplace in the past we did do some archiving a little bit. I thought Calvin did it with the uh, with the uh, audit log demo because I think. But I don't remember if that was the same. I, I, I maybe, maybe not. But I, yeah, it was part of the audit log demo. So, but, but Nick hasn't done it. And here's the thing: in the book, originally it said orphans are bad, and and I thought that was a valuable conversation. I respect what Nick says, right? So I left it in the book. It's not like I didn't delete the book. So I left it in, and then I put my counter opinion, so you could see both opinions side by side. So. We're going to allow for that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want to file a complaint about the level of uh, ugliness in this broadcast, you feel that FileMaker is just not right for you and you want to tell me all about it, or if you want to tell me about your success story with FileMaker, send us an email to support at rcconsulting.com, support at rcconsulting.com, because there is a lot of cool stuff here. Um, and then uh, Nick will be addressing our cat. I'm kind of afraid to kind of... Uh, do a search on this because it's like you could type something inadvertently wrong and you get really uh, ugly stuff on the internet. But I'm going to type cat uh, category, and I spelled that wrong. Category, category five hoarder, <laughs> <laughs> and see what kind of images I get for that. Oh, okay, so this is uh, probably uh, what happened. Oh, what is wrong with hoarding? That might be a problem right there, my friends. So <laughs> if this is your database, right? Now, if, yeah, exactly. if, 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 okay, so that's category one, category two, <laughs> category three, 
Category four, and then category five is uh, probably could go to jail for that potentially, right? So uh, anyway, <laughs> so I, I didn't know it was a website dedicated to this. this. is great. So if you're a category five hoarder with your database res records, uh, we should we should Nick, you should call it category five hoarder hoarders, right? <laughs> That'd be the title of the broadcast. That'll be fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm I'm the I'm category five cleaner. Yeah, I went over to Nick's house. It was pretty damn clean. It wasn't as clean as like Steve Jobs' house, but it was pretty clean, pretty sterile. Very uh, minimalistic there, minimal. All right, everyone, I appreciate the hard work. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing, what are we doing tomorrow? Oh, it's got Christian Schmitz uh, about monkey bread. Feeding your monkey, feeding your inner monkey. It'll be very exciting, All right, everyone? Cool. Yep. See ya. Bye. Collected the quarterback, great read, good patience, more importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10, 925 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot to step, stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Oh. Slightly behind him, but Danny makes the grab.